Welcome back to another edition of Rudy's Rants. I am Rudy Rodriguez Shomat, your host, and one of the three members of Come On Now, the podcast, which we record on a weekly basis. But once in a while, I do jump on here to rant because I can't wait for the next episode as uh, stuff pops off. And if I wait till next week, it's old. So I hit it when I can hit it. And another thing popped off yesterday where LeBron James and JJ Reddick started their new podcast together. And if you haven't seen it, check it out. See what you think. Because I've seen it. And I will tell you right now, it is a piece of two basketball players telling you how smart they are and telling you how dumb you are. LeBron James is a brilliant guy. He's a puppet master over so many medias and members of the media. Um, and now JJ Reddick is now one of his puppets. It also explains why JJ Reddick has been saying some of the outlandish shit he's been saying about players in the sixties and seventies, calling them janitors, plumbers, and garbage men when comparing them to players in the now and so forth. And then, you know, he introduces this podcast as a way to celebrate basketball, to strike a positive note and promote and explain the game and all that sweet nothing bullcrap. And that first episode of that podcast was nothing more than an absolute hatchet job on teammates and players in the NBA. You have two guys who are world-class narcissists. I hate using that word because that to me is a generation... Z word. So I'll use another word. Two guys that are really full of themselves and really believe their shit. And look, JJ Reddick was a great basketball player. So when he calls himself a when he called himself a janitor or whatever plumber in the, in the, in, the, in the intro to that, I laugh at it because I know how good JJ Reddick was. He's one of the greatest shooters of all time. He was a great great player at Duke. Had a 15 year NBA career. All credit him. He's a really smart guy. I'm not going to sit here and say he's not, but he's a condescending, pompous ass. <laughs> Just is. It's his personality. Hell, I might be, and I'm okay with that. But I don't go around telling you how how dumb you are and how smart I am. I don't create a podcast saying I play basketball and listen to me tell you about how dumb you are and how much you don't know. The podcast should be about entertaining people as well. And all that podcast was was disrespecting players in the league, past and present, not by name, but you get the drift. Questioning their IQ levels, for which I don't necessarily disagree because I think basketball IQ as a whole today is as bad as it's ever been. LeBron James is one of the most brilliant basketball players in history. He is, if he's not the smartest basketball player in history, he's in the top three. I think Larry Bird's right there. I think Michael Jordan's right there. I think Kobe Bryant's in that conversation. But LeBron James, after a, after a game, is like a freaking encyclopedia. Like, like he had a photo, record a, rec- a video recorder recording the game in his brain. And... There was part of that podcast that I'm going to play for you in a second where LeBron James basically says that guys in the NBA don't have any basketball IQ. Take a listen. Um, but the one thing that uh, those coaches always told me, they, they told me that I had a, a, an uncanny ability to process information faster than anyone they've ever seen. One coach, and this is, I know you're going to, you're going to smirk about this. <laughs> <laughs> There's guys in the NBA that if you call a play or a coach draw a play to one side of the floor, they can't switch it in their head and do it and say, let's run it to the other side yeah. without the coach drawing on the clipboard. Yeah. 
I've never understood that. And I don't know. I never understood that. So if I say we're running, we running thumb down angle, we're running on the right side. So because I have a left-hand point guard, he wants to come middle to a strong hand. He has the ability to hit the pocket pass with the left hand, has the ability to throw ahead his lefty, and also has the ability to throw back on the shake. But if I say, hey, we run a thumb down angle on the left side because now the right hand guard coming right. I've had teammates just like, oh, what, what, do, you, what do you mean? Coaches always, every, in practice, we only ran it from this side. Yeah. I, I could flip a play when I was eight years old. No matter if it was just pass and cut. No matter if it was, let's run flex, but let's start on the left side. No matter if it was just, you know, let's DHO, DHO. DHO driving kick, the last one. All right, now let's let's just drive the baseline, baseline drive drift. If the guard, if the big, if the if the if the forward on the left side is looking at the ball, you can slot cut. I could do that. I was doing that stuff when I was like eight, nine years old, and and my coaches would just be blown away, and I would just I, I wouldn't know where it came from. I have no idea. So to get back to your question, I think I was born with a sports IQ. Hmm. And it could have been any sport, but I just think basketball was the one that I, like I was, I chose, and maybe I was chosen to do that as well. Yeah. And I just took it to a whole, as I got older and you So now that you've heard all that, what are your thoughts? I know what mine are. I know that he mentions Rajon Rondo as a guy with basketball IQ. I know he mentions Nikola Jokic as a guy with basketball IQ, Draymond Green, Steph. You know who didn't mention having, having basketball IQ? Dwayne Wade, Chris Bosh, Kyrie Irving, Kevin Love. These are guys that won championships with him. Hell, the first two are the reason he actually is who he is today. For which there's clearly a fallout in their relationship since Dwayne Wade went on Club Shay Shay and kind of told the world he was pissed off when LeBron left Miami. Which, as he should have been, because you know what? I'm your friend, and you owe me the decency of letting me know before it happens that it's going to happen and not letting me find out like everybody else, like I'm some fucking dumb fuck that you just met, met yesterday. But this podcast is, a noth noth is nothing but negative about the current state of the league and the players in the league. Talking about how when he was eight years old, LeBron James could visualize a play and if he had to flip it around to the other direction, he had no problem doing so. Good job, buddy. You're great. We know. You told us. You keep telling us. You also told us that you're the chosen one. Sports chose you. It could have been any sport. So you would have been like this if you were playing football, baseball, volleyball, tennis. You name the sport. But basketball chose you. Yeah, I think you're six foot eight, 260 pounds. Probably was the, probably was the best option. And with the fact that you flop around all the damn time, if you got hit by a strong safety playing football, you'd be would have got off the field. Playing Catholic school football, you know, in Ohio, I'm sure was not exactly the most competition around. JJ Reddick said much of the same things in that podcast as well. We didn't believe how players leave the huddle and forgot to play when they walk out of the walk out of the huddle. I agree with him. I agree with him. It's shocking to me. But is this the platform to say it while this man's still playing in the NBA right now? Probably not. But he's at a point in his life and in his career where he does not give a fuck. He does not care. He's told you he doesn't care. He will shit on Russell Westbrook. He will shit on D'Angelo Russell. He will shit on any player that he feels is not getting him to the level that he needs to be at to win another championship, which will never happen again. Because the real problem in the end of, at the end of the day is him. It's him. The Lakers play better when he doesn't play. They play better. Maybe not in the playoffs, but in regular season, they play better when he's not on the court. If Anthony Davis is out there with D'Lo and Reeves and these other guys, they play better. They just do. Because they're more free-flowing. The ball doesn't stop with LeBron every time he touches it. These are facts. Now, let Nick Wright tell it to you, his, his puppet on a string as well, that, you know, you would hear something completely different. 
that it's everyone else's fault. Russell Russell Westbrook was the problem. Mind you, Russell Westbrook goes to the Clippers, and he's looking great. He's been playing very, very well. They love him there. Amazing. Same building. Same city. They love him. Lakers, they hated him. Why? Let me tell you something, man. You can watch this podcast. If this is a podcast to uplift people, to teach people about basketball, to make them, make them understand, I don't give a shit what thumbs down is or floppy or horns, net, horns, chest, or whatever the fuck other terminology. I coached basketball for seven years. Quite frankly, I've never even heard those terms. I don't care because you know what I call it? Pick and roll. Pick and roll. You want to make up whatever names you want to make up? If those are the names that they use in the NBA, great. I don't care. I coached for seven years, travel ball for 17 and under. I've worked with coaches who coach for state championships. That terminology doesn't do shit for me. It doesn't teach anyone anything about basketball. Kobe Bryant did something called detail on ESPN a few years ago before he passed away. And it was basically a breakdown of individual players in games and their movements. Now, is that entertaining to me? No. I don't want to sit and watch a 30-minute film session. Not at all. It's not interesting. I can do it for about 10, and then after about 10 minutes, I'm good. There are other things to do. But that was educational. That was teaching something. In fact, he did it, and Jason Tatum came away. Was One, one of the guys he broke down was Jason Tatum, and Jason Tatum actually learned so much because of that. It made him better. It made him a better player. What I watch today won't make anyone a better player. It was insulting. Because you know what? Not everyone learns the same way. So if you learned it because you're a prodigy, if you learned it so well when you were eight years old, woohoo, great job, buddy. <clears throat> yeah, you're a prodigy. We know this. You've told us. You tatted on your body. You named yourself a king. But the all the I mean the chosen one, king, all these things. Woohoo! Look at me. And now once again, look at me. Let me tell you something. People learn differently. So what you write on the piece of paper for certain people, they learn by looking at paper. They look by they learn by repetition. So you're actually insulting people to a level that you don't even understand because there is there are learning disabilities that people have. And most of these professional athletes, if you want to keep it a buck, don't have college degrees. Haven't gone to more than a year or two of college in the NBA right now. I don't know what the town is, but I'm going to venture to guess at least half of the guys in the NBA right now don't have college degrees. They didn't play four years of college ball. So the, 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 the cap of their education, even in basketball, was one or two years of college. So they didn't get the coaching beyond high school that would have maybe helped them there. And you think it's cool to insult them on fucking on a fucking podcast because you're so great and they're so dumb. We're all dumb. Could I flip a play in my brain? Yeah, I could. Played all the sports. I know how I, I drew out plays, so I had no problem flipping the play. But lots of guys are just athletes. They're not basketball savants. They're not minds. They're not, they're, they're ballers. They're not here. They're not the same. If you ask me right now, will there be a player of this generation, meaning they started playing in 2015 or later, who will be a top 15 player? in 20 years of all time? And I'll tell you the answer is no. It's no. It is no. Because there's no guy right now in the NBA that started their, that started their career after 2015 who I will sit here and tell you is a star. A real, real star. A Steph Curry. Heck, I will tell you this. I don't think Giannis Antetokounmpo is a top 15 player when he retires. I don't, think he's ever win, I don't think he'll ever win another championship as the league is constructed. Not on the team he's on. But if you haven't checked out that podcast, look, watch the first episode. Because that wasn't a celebration of, of basketball. That was a disrespect of players, 
playing basketball, current and past. And, you know, when you when you play with a guy like D Wade, who I think was a pretty damn smart basketball player, and you play with a guy like Kyrie, I think Kyrie's a very smart basketball player. And the only guy you mentioned that you ever played with on your team who had a high basketball IQ was Rajon Rondo, who was one of the most inconsistent basketball players of my, in, in, in the last 50. I mean, Rajon Rondo could have been so great, but his attitude was complete and utter dog shit. He was a drama diva, played in 10 teams. And when you're that great, you shouldn't be traded 10 times or cut 10 times. I know he was cut, not cut, but traded, released, free agency, all that stuff. Let go because he's not he's not easy to deal with. But man, it is cra- it is an it is absolute bananas to see this podcast because now you know why JJ Reddick has been saying the shit he's been saying for the last year about plumbers and janitors and carpenters and all that crap about the old guys because and been shilling it up for freaking LeBron saying you're the great he's the goat he's the goat mind you JJ Reddick I think is. 37, which means he was 1987, I think. I'm not sure. I'm not exact. But that would mean he watched Jordan until he was about 11 years old. And you didn't watch that 10-year period of absolute fucking dominance? Because you don't remember it. You remember what you see now. And the fact that people today will dismiss the fact that the reality is the rules have changed so much to make the game so much easier for the offense and make it, uh, make it possible for someone like LeBron to play this long. Because if he was getting planted on his ass every time he went to the rim, he would not be in the NBA today. Because it's so because of the physical levels. And people say, oh, I watch video, I watch this. So, bro, Michael Jordan was planted on his ass so many times in the 90s, late 80s and 90s. It happened all the time. He got hit every time going to the basket. It's a fact. That podcast, whatever it is, it's going to get tons of subscribers and tons of followers and tons and tons of views. But if you're looking to be educated on basketball, that ain't educating shit. That's just basically salon, diva, female gossip. You want to go to a fucking salon with a bunch of women? That is what that podcast was. That was a gossip rag, bunch of fucking garbage. And it's very disappointing because LeBron James is a basketball genius. He's an absolute basketball genius. And J.J. Reddick's a pretty smart damn guy, too, when it comes to basketball. And all they did was gossip about fucking guys not having basketball IQ, forgetting plays out of the huddle, and all kinds of other basketball IQ mistakes that players make on a daily basis. Ain't that something? The podcast designed to celebrate basketball did nothing but shit on it and shit on the people playing it. Good job. I got nothing left. Leave a comment. Tell me what you think about that podcast. You like it? You love it? You hate it? I'll tell you what, it is entertaining in the fact of it gives you something to talk about because this man's still playing right now. And it's makes it's not surprising because he's the same guy that said his son could play in the NBA when he was in high school. He has no problem disrespecting current guys in the NBA because he doesn't respect them. He never has and he never will, no matter how much knowledge he has of the game. Respect. That is something that I don't care how rich you are and how much money you've put in your pockets and how much you've accomplished. Respect to disrespect these men who have worked their lives to get to that point. They, they're not you. That's why Michael Jordan couldn't coach basketball. That's why the great players typically, typically can't coach. Because they don't understand what it is to fail and not be as good. They don't know why guys can't do certain things because they could. But again, that's all I got. Leave a comment, subscribe. Come on now. Thank you for watching Come On Now, the podcast. 
please be sure to subscribe, like, comment, and ring that bell so you get up-to-the-minute updates when we publish new content. You can also find us on Facebook and Instagram at Come On Now Podcast and X and TikTok at Come On Now Pod. Thank you again for supporting this channel. Oh,